integration with YouTube and Zoom is way better. On Facebook, it's kind of clunky. So hold on one second here. Okay, hi everybody. Um, let's build our audience here, but we've got um, <clears throat> Susan Allen and myself are here. Oh, here we go. We've got some, hi Becky. Uh, we've got some people on YouTube here. So uh, let's let our audience build a little bit and actually why that's happening. Oh, hi Marla, Laura R. We've got also 305 dog training. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Carol Woolley, Tammy Garney says hi. So welcome to all these beautiful, beautiful people that are here joining us. So excited. So exciting. We're just gonna share this on some, I'm just gonna actually share this on my page. Um, so, and share this on a couple of pages. So, and we're gonna let our audience kind of build for a moment um, and why we're doing that. And then once, We're just gonna get started soon. I'm super excited. If you're just joining us, I'm here with Susan Allen. She is a medium and psychic and animal communicator. Um, <clears throat> and Susan, can you give them your website? SusanAllenMedium.com. SusanAllenMedium.com. Okay, wonderful. And um, Susan, um, tell people a little bit, just what before we get started here, but tell people a little bit about what is your definition, because we're not into our full interview yet, but I'm just doing some prep work because I'm putting it out on my Twitter and my Facebook. Tell people, what is the difference? Because I have my own way of thinking, but I, I'd love to hear your opinion. What, what do you see as the difference between a psychic and a medium? Oh, okay, I love that. Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I like to go medium and the difference in the both is that when you're mediumistically communicating the, you, you feel different and I go higher up because I'm trying to get the messages, as you know, from your loved ones, ancestors, spirit guides. And because I feel like that's the, I mean, it's the purest information for me. Although I get emails that say that, you know, the stuff I say psychically is happening for people, which I love, but I always like to use spirit first because I learned early on spirit doesn't lie. And I think you and I had that little talk about how spirit is here for our highest good and they oh, yeah, generally will give in, give pure information for us and our souls to move forward. Mm -hmm. So a psychic, you know, um, not that I'm, I, I think a good psychic is amazing. I love psychics. Um, but it's, it's, it's my intuition. I'm using my own intuition coming through and like seeing things like I could see something. I, I see future events. Sometimes I see, um, and it depends on the sitter, as you know, like if the soul is ready to hear the, the, the things that are happening, I never give out like I, most of them. I, I mean, I've never said anything negative to somebody except when they needed some growth, mm -hmm. you know, for their soul. Yeah. We'll have to move through things, but my, my readings are not like, Oh, do you see him breaking up with me? It's like, no, I see that this happens. And that happens. Like there's a, a, a movement. It's like, you know, it's like a symphony with people's lives. It's not so, you know, cut and dry. And, and I think that people want like immediate answers. And I think my readings, how I, I feel that people walk away with feeling some healing or when I go to spirit and I ask for the, the mediumship, I ask for the soul's highest and best and mm -hmm. my guides to work with their guides before every reading, I, I have a tendency to feel that spirit always answers what they need. So at the end of the reading, I'm like, do you have any questions? And people are usually like, no, actually you touched on everything. And um, so I just trust the process that spirit knows what that person needs or what that person's asking for right so guys welcome so i think we're kind of have built our audience hi to everybody that has joined us if you're joining us um if you found this link on twitter or facebook or instagram or wherever we put it out there 
So um, we're happy to be here. I'm here with Susan Allen, who is a medium psychic and animal communicator. And we are gonna do some live readings today, which is gonna be super exciting. And I know that we're really looking forward to doing that um, with you. So um, really excited. Uh, Susan, uh, just for some people that are just joining us, can you give your website one more time? Sure, Susan Allen Medium. Dot com. <laughs> Wonderful. So you can connect with Susan there. And I think after you um, listen to our interview and, and things like that and, and listen to her readings, you'll probably want to uh, connect with her. So Susan, um, um, what we're doing with the YouTube lives is I'm, I'm interviewing people a little bit more in an interview style. And we're really getting to know um, mediums and psychics and healers at a deeper level. And I'm probably even going to expand and have um, other people, you know, friends, people that have interesting lives, and we're going to do some in-depth interviews and, and just have fun, really get to know people. Because sometimes we don't, you know, Susan's been on several of my Facebook lives, but, um, and, and I know a lot about her from, you know, working with her and things, um, but it's always nice to kind of do an, a little bit more of an in-depth um, you know, interview and, and things and, and really get to know somebody. So Susan, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself for those who don't know, where were you, where were you born? Where did, where did you, where did you come from? What was your, you know, what, what, tell me about the beginning. Oh, that's a great question. Um, Brooklyn, New York, I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Right. I was born in a very religious uh, Jewish neighborhood and we were like the only Italian family left on the block. <laughs> so we're ready. I never fit in. <laughs> right? right? The odd man out. And um, always trying to fit in, you know, to that culture, but I never really quite fit in because it was an ultra orthodox Jewish community. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I could remember my mother wanting to move to an island, like get out of Brooklyn and move. And so we moved to um, a place called Staten Island, which I know people have heard of. Mm -hmm. And um, I started it, uh, I just always was different. My mother would call me like this hypersensitive kid. But, um, you know, I, um, and then I, I came out to Southern California uh, as a 15 year old and fell in love with the animals and the, the weather. And I, I said to my mom, I'm going to move to California and you should come with me. And she never wanted to move here. And eventually I ended up here uh, alone by myself in, uh, in 1995. And this, I really feel like this is home. So, yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, tell me, um, Growing up, because many people have, you know, people come into mediumship in different ways. Some people yes. train into it. Some people have a near-death experience. Some people are natural mediums. Right. Looking back on your life, um, when you, when, when did you first have a psychic or mediumistic experience? I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but my older brother, who is, I feel like he's the one that raised me because he was the one who always would come get me in my crib and feed me and change my diaper. He said that he came into my room and I was laughing and giggling. And um, I was three or four, no religious background yet, no religious tendencies or anything. Mm -hmm. And I, he walked in on me and he said, Susie, who are you talking to? And I said, the blessed mother, which is like, now he tells me, you know, right, fast right. forward 50 years, he's telling me this now. Um, so I was like, and he said that it, it scared him. And then as a five-year-old, I knew my mother would pass with cancer, my natural mother. Um, but I didn't know what cancer was, but I, I felt every emotion that I, that I had later in life when she got cancer when I was 23 it was very weird um that I could have those feelings at such a young young age you know the same feelings that I would have when I when she was diagnosed it was very and then when, to talk to my brother and hear him say that and the the mystics really happened for me um having a very troubled childhood but I had a grandfather that was very uh, religious and Catholicism and I adored him and he spoke broken English and um, he loved telling me the stories of the saints and the miracles 
And I was hooked. I mean, I was like, oh, and I just could feel my vibration like raised as a child. And, and that's kind of how it all started. You know, I feel it started really young. And, and then my relationship with animals was um, different, you know, very different. I, you know, deer would come out of the woods when I'd be walking and come follow me around like the Pied Piper. It was very interesting. And my parents were, you know, working class and busy and they would just look at, like, look at me like the odd, the odd child. <laughs> um, if you guys are just joining us, um, this is Thomas Sean and I'm here with Susan Allen. Um, Susan Allen is a medium and a psychic and we're doing an in-depth sort of interview about her, just everything, talking about her childhood and, and getting to know people on a deeper level. And then a little bit later, um, we're actually gonna do some live readings. So if you'd like to have a reading um, with Susan or I, um, stick around, you know, cause we're gonna do that at some point. You can also go ahead, if you see that red button there, go ahead and subscribe to this, um, to this channel. Um, that way you'll get notifications every time I go live or post a new video, which I, I tend to try to do. And you can also go ahead and give it a thumbs up or a like um, as well. Um, and if you would like to share this on your Facebook page or your Twitter page, you can click the share button right now. And, and that'll, that'll direct you how to share it on your page on Facebook or Twitter. And then people can, you can invite your friends over here. We can have a big, uh, big party. <laughs> so, Susan, what was it like for you because I, I do know a little bit just from having done a reading for you and um, about your mother dying and, and your mother. So oh, that's you lost her early in life, correct? I what? You lost her earlier in your life? I lost, well, I kind of lost her initially. She really didn't want a baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another one. Mm -hmm. So she was kind of absent. But my brother raised me and took me to museums. And he was stellar in my life and just... Mm -hmm. I would say to him, how do you know? You're only 11 years older than me. And he goes, I just knew how to love you. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he was like a walk-in for me of pure love. Mm -hmm. And um, later in life, when I lost her, this is an amazing story. Like I just poo-pooed all the intuition that I have. You know, you gotta work. You have to, you have to, you know, it's like that mentality of people that I try to help um, where it's like, you work, you get a job. I mean, if it was up to my dad early in life, he wanted me to get a union job in New York dispensing opticals for the <laughs> school district. You know, this is because you have to have a job. You have to have your, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that when you have, when you have a different experience of life, which I always did, I seem to have, came, I came in this way. It's, it doesn't really work out to put yourself in a box. And I kept boxing myself in and getting the jobs and not loving my jobs. But I remember about six months after my mother died, um, I, I, was, I had a boyfriend that ended up being a husband and I, we were married for 13 years and, and he was a very good person. And um, I was sick. And um, I, he said, do you want to go to the hospital? And I said, no, no, go, go. I don't want to go to the hospital. And um, I took some Advil and I was starting to fall asleep. Only I was dying. And I heard my mother scream in my head. It's the middle of the winter in Brooklyn, New York. And I heard her say, get to the emergency room, screaming. And I went, that's, that's very odd. And I was still like not you know, can I not, I wasn't connecting the dots, mm -hmm. you know, I love this work, but I wasn't connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And I got to the emergency room and they gave me my last rites and they had to do an emergency procedure on me to save my life. And, um, I thought like looking back and like these, these little things were happening to me frequently. And I always felt, I always had like these angelic people come into my life. And, you know, everyone that, that, you know, loves this work or feels that they were kind of like saved for something to help others. I feel as if, um, you know, there's a, a great line in a Tennessee Williams play because I thought, oh, I, I think I'm supposed to do that. Or I think I'm supposed to do this. So I studied acting and I studied literature and none of it felt right. 
You know, I never felt like I should be an actress and I, it just didn't feel authentic. Mm-hmm. And um, I always I always relied on the kindness of strangers. It's really interesting. Like I felt like I was always helped somehow, like I needed to move. And this girl said she would help me move. And then she wasn't available. And I really needed help right away to move. This is when I was really young and uh, somebody else popped up and it was like, that's kind of, it was very synchronistic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I felt like I lived my life, not so synchronistically until I healed all the stuff that I had to go through, right. because by healing that stuff, I was able to allow and be present with something other than the monkey mind or the trauma mind. I was able to be present for spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, um, because um, in terms of obviously, you know, nobody goes to their guidance counselor and says, you know, <laughs> hey, I want to be a psychic or a medium. Um, yeah. So when you were sort of as you what what did you want to be when you grew up? What was your what what path were you on? I thought I wanted to be an actor and. I started to get into acting when my mother got sick and she was vehemently against it. She thought I was too sensitive, I couldn't handle it and she was poo-pooing it. And I, I, I really, I wasn't very good. I wasn't a good actress mm-hmm. um, because I, I always felt like it was inauthentic, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I remember my mother sick with cancer, she'd be with me on an audition and she was giving me line readings, you know? <laughs> It never felt like it was coming from me. I needed something that would come from me. And I was always loving psychics or mystics or, you know, um, seeing a woman in New York and I studied privately the higher arcana, the the tarot and painting my own deck. And I'd be with three other women in Manhattan in this woman's apartment. And she was like this famous mystic named Ann Levinson. And she lived on downtown Fifth Avenue. And I would like just love these meetings, you know, with her. Yeah. And I'd spend two hours a week with her. And it was, you know, I feel like all these little things were the foundation. Yeah. When did the, because I know a big part of your work now is about animals. And uh, when did that piece become important in your life? That piece became important in my life. Uh, when I had my dog Rosie, and I just, you know, I hadn't had a dog since. So, just, so growing up, you weren't really an animal person. I didn't have a lot of animals, you know. Being raised in Brooklyn, we always had dogs. We always had two dogs, and um, or one dog. We ended up with one dog. And when she passed away a year after my mom, I said, I can't do this. I can't do the dogs. But before I left that apartment in Brooklyn. I had 17 feral cats in the backyard and I I never saw myself as a cat lady, but my dad built a house to keep them warm. I asked him, can you make me a house? We put a drop light in it with insulation. And during the winter, cats that would ordinarily fight, they were all piled in this box, you know, under this heat lamp. It was really adorable. Mm -hmm. And I I thought, I I need to get these cats neutered, fixed and get a home because I'm moving to California. So I felt like that was my good karma, like my good animal karma. And then years later, I, I had um, a bone surgery. I had started with bone surgeries when I was 10, believe it or not, like what 10 year old has to go through bone surgeries, but it led up to the person that I am. And I had this major bone surgery and I thought, oh my God, I'm so stressed out. I was selling real estate and I couldn't heal because I was so stressed out. And my brother in his infinite wisdom said to me, Susie, take a silly class online. But I had already been like this huge animal girl and lover of animals and pets. I didn't have a farm because I lived in Brooklyn. And I took an animal intuition class and it was like a teleclass, you know, and the teacher would put up and I kind of teach like this too. When I do an animal intuition class, the teacher would put up a picture of a pet and, um, I, I should say, you know, meditate, let your weirdo go, relax, and just write what you get. And I was like writing volumes. And that's how my business really started. 
I would do it for friends and family. And then people were inundating me. And I know I knew so much like details about this woman's pet. I, it sounded like a Disney movie. Like I'm not even, I never thought myself a writer. I am now, but um, people were calling me from the class for readings. A veterinarian called me, she was in the class and um, I gave her readings. And I would literally, Thomas, I was so into making sure that I was specific and good and accurate. I would meditate for half an hour. I would journal on a pet photo for another half hour. And then I'd be on the phone with somebody for an hour. And I did this for six years. And then I said to Spirit, you know, I can't keep writing down. Like my hand is hurting. Like I would be, I have books and books and books filled with animal readings. Wow. And um, I said to Spirit, I can't, like you have to figure out a better way to get this information to me. Cause this is like, I'm getting busier and I can't spend three hours with one client. Otherwise forget this, you know? Right. And I, but I loved it. And I remember my husband going, don't quit real estate. I mean, this is, this is a little crazy. And I said, yeah, I agree with you. It is kind of crazy, <laughs> and, uh, but I love it. And I just, I did it. And all of a sudden I didn't need the pen and paper anymore. Right. The thoughts. And then um, I, and I, and then I kind of started a, I was on the phone with the, um, this, this celebrity's girlfriend and all of a sudden her father started to appear in the photo across the room from me. Like I didn't know it was her father. And I, I would, I started to say, there's a man. And I didn't say he was in my photo with my dad, but I knew mm. it was her dad because he was in the photo of me and my dad. Mm. And um, I said, this is what this man looks like. And he said, he didn't get to say goodbye. And I said, he's very thin. And I said, and he has black glasses. And I said, I think it's your father. And she said, it's my father. And um, her father passed away at 6 a.m. in Manhattan during spin class. And he was ultra fit and he had a heart attack and he didn't get to say goodbye. And he was a big fashion designer. And so that's kind of how it really started. I was in animal mediumship. And, and then when I realized I'm getting dead people, I said to them, don't scare me. I have anxiety. <laughs> don't be walking through my house dead. If you right. want me to do this work, like I would have a conversation in my head to spirit. If you want me to do this work, you know, give me the messages so you don't scare me and I could get the messages to them. And actually what's really weird is I'm a girl that always had major anxiety, panic attacks. I would get on a subway and I would just be completely drenched by the time I would get to New York from right. Brooklyn to New York or Staten Island. I would be like just saturated in so much sweat from so much anxiety because I was obviously doing things I wasn't supposed to do, like working in an office, you know? Right. And um, spirit is so good. It's so good because when I started doing spirit work, my anxiety, it's, it has gotten, I mean, when I, if I start to feel anxious at all, I just go into meditation now. Mm -hmm. or I start talking to my spirit guides or my my people or and I I'm telling you it's like it's it's say it has healed me on so many levels doing this work um and and I I think like if if anybody has the ability to do this work um and and they think they love it they should nurture it because yeah. it's been it's been amazing it's better than anything I've ever done yeah, that's beautiful. Um, what, do you, what do you think are the biggest challenges that people in the mediumship world um, face? You know, people that are mediums, what, what, what you know, if, if somebody was to say, you know, what are, the, what are the things that as a medium make your life more challenging or obstacles that, I mean, are there anything that you would say or is there anything that you don't like about being a medium? Um, I, 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 I wish, but it, it's not always like that. Cause we're, we're dealing with human beings that have, that are scared and frightened and need answers. And sometimes I will get on the phone with somebody, um, and say, 
Um, but before anybody has a reading with me, if they've, they've come through you referring me, they'll say, I've had a reading with Thomas John and he's amazing. And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, I know he's amazing. <laughs> I said, well, I read differently, or this is how I read, you know, and all that. But the biggest challenge is usually when people um, can't relax enough and for me to get the messages out to them because they're they're frantic about getting their questions answered right away. Right. Well, what's gonna happen with my do you do you understand what I'm saying? Like what, what is he coming back? I haven't slept, or am I getting the job? And I I get it. And I, the only thing that I could say is that's, it doesn't happen all the time. Like I'm, I've been very lucky and that I, everybody has their own favorite medium. There's plenty of people and somebody will gravitate to me that won't gravitate to medium somebody else. And everybody will have the right medium. You just have to trust, you know, that that's the right medium. And then usually, I don't, I don't run into tons of those problems. I, I had, you know, certain people call me and want right away, psychic, psychic, psychic. And I, I prefer to go mediumistic at first and then like feel my way and roll into all the psychic questions because spirit generally answers the psychic questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, tell me um, with your with your work um, and if you guys are just joining us um, this is I, this is Thomas John and you are tuning in to us through YouTube um, we're on YouTube live on the Thomas John channel with Susan Allen who is a medium psychic animal communicator um, and we are talking about just you know mediumistic psychic things and um, we're in a little bit here going to start and talk about, uh, we're actually going to do some readings. Um, and so if you, um, if you're interested in having a reading um, with us, and I'm, I'm going to let Susan do most of the reading, but I might chime in or something like that. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I just put a link into the chat. And what you're going to do is you're going to click through on that link. It's going to take you in through Zoom. And we're going to pick the people through there. It's just easier because that way we can see you and it's the best way to kind of bring you in. So I just put that into chat. Um, and like I said, if you want to just um, click in through there and then you'll be brought in to the Zoom. And then when we're ready to go to the readings, um, um, we will... We'll, we'll pick people off of there. Um, Susan, uh, tell me, uh, a lot of people will talk about this and, and, and I'm always, this is one of my favorite questions to ask fellow mediums or psychics. Um, a lot of people wanna get more connected to their loved ones, feel their loved ones more, um, get signs. What are the things that you feel you can do um, just just a lay person, not somebody that has any special gifts or abilities or anything like that. Though I believe we're all gifted with intuition. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the things that people can do to, to, you know, to enhance that connection to the spirit world? Well, that was, that was what my last newsletter was about. I just love this topic because people say, I'm not getting signs. I, I, my, my father died and I was so close to him and I'm not getting signs. And I'm like, the best way to start your intuitive process to connect is ask for little things. Like I talked about, it sounds so trivial, Thomas, but a parking spot when you turn the corner. I used to do that as a kid, you know, when I was going in Manhattan to all the discos, I would turn the corner and wanted a spot right in front because I was in high heels. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I would think, I just, I would do this thing where I put my things, go, okay, spirit, like I'm 17 years old. Will you please get me a spot? <laughs> and I'd get a spot right in front. Wow. And that's, I would test my intuition like that, but collect te uh, telepathically, I, you know, when people get on the phone with me and they have the best readings of their lives, I'm blown away at how these, these messages come in for them like that. It's because they have an ongoing talk with their loved ones all the time. I said, did you talk to these three people when you came in? Oh yeah, I talked to them every day. Wow. 
So it's, it's that it's like, they're here to help assist and guide you and protect you. Mm -hmm. That is the major thing that when my mother crossed over, she became an angel in heaven. When my father crossed over, he became, when my sister crossed over, she became, I have a team. So I, you know, as a lot of us have had people that have had so much tremendous loss in their lives. I try to help people raise their vibration enough to know that they are not alone. I mean, I, I remember once I had a reading and I felt like an orphan here. I felt like, who do I have? You know, my right. dog. Right. And I felt so alone. And I went to, um, I went to a medium and my mom came right in and she said, tell her she's not alone. Oh, is that amazing? Yeah. We're all here for her. We're all watching over her. She has a family. It was like, oh my God. Yeah. So I just feel like that connection is so strong. That love never dies. That love bonds that you have, whether it's for a pet or a person or a loved one, or, you know, a lover or a husband, whatever, that love is still so strong. It's the one thing that we can hold on to is the love. That's why love heals. It's, it's love does heal. When people love you, you get a healing. When you're being loved, you get healed. And love is the most powerful thing. And hurt people hurt other people, as you know. Mm -hmm. So going through life and having some of the experiences that I've had, I realized it made me who I am. It opened up my third eye. It helped me become much more sensitive. And the people that really helped me and that were there for me and the things that they said, people, you know, the gurus of the world, my, like the Wayne Dyers of the world and his writings. And when I met him, it was life-changing. Those people that really have helped me with their words or the mediums that helped me with their, their words of love and light are the, are, is love. That's love because spirit is communicating to that medium to help um, shore you up and make you feel like you're not alone and you're, you're not walking in this life alone. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so there is some issue with, must be with the link. Uh, it's not, so what I'm gonna do guys is, um, I'm actually gonna put it on Facebook right now to get you guys. So hold on one second. So I just posted it on, I actually posted it on Facebook. So go over to Thomas John Celebrity Medium on Facebook, I hate, and try to go on it through that way. If you can pull it up that way, I just made a post. Um, so I don't know why it doesn't work. It must be that YouTube filters out. So hopefully you can guys can see it on there. Just go over to Thomas John Celebrity Medium. And um, um, I'm actually gonna, yes, somebody actually said, yeah, it didn't show. It might be something with the, maybe with um, links or something. Um, so I'm going to have, actually somebody just messaged me too. So I'm gonna to see if, yeah, I don't, I think it must get filtered out. So I did go and put it on Thomas John Celebrity Medium um, on Facebook. So you can find it there and just go over and click in. You should start to, yeah, we've got some people. So people are finding it. So we're just gonna leave you guys right there. We're not ready to take readings yet, but we're gonna take readings in a little bit. Um, also, if you wanna put in like your topic or what you'd like to ask Susan, um, she's gonna do some readings. So yeah. Susan, my I got two more quick questions for you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, talk to me about animals and, and why, why are our souls so connected to animals? Why? Are they here to teach us um, what what is what are what what do souls of animals are they are they more evolved than us are they are, like so how do we how do we relate to animals and what is their soul contract with humans? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I feel that animals come into our lives for a reason to help us either see our great self for our darker side. I mean, I, I have very close friends that I adore that have gotten animals and given them away. And 
it's very, um, I, I stay out of judgment because I feel like that's the contract that we had with those animals. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in most people's lives that love animals, they will relate to that soul pet. It, mm -hmm. I call it a soul pet. Oh, for sure. And um, I feel like that is the greatest teaching that you can get from that soul pet because it's yeah. it's it's a hundred percent telepathic and a heart connection. Mm -hmm. It's um, not in your head. It's not figuring out what your dinner plans are, or what you're going to order on the menu. It's just it's this special light etheric kind of energy. Um, and I feel, you know, when, when I got my, my dog, Rosie, I had no idea what I would, that I would be doing this work, but she, I feel like she helped facilitate this because I ended up doing animal communication and then went into psychic mediumship. And it's the, the link for me, since she crossed over last September, it's gotten heightened. So I feel like that animal was so much more than just the dog. And a lot of them come in and they are so much more. It's not just, um, especially if they come into your life, because I do feel like they travel in soul families. You know, they follow you from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. And they're not always a dog, mm -hmm. which I had to, I figured out during doing the work, doing readings, because I brought through a dog and it was somebody's son. Mm -hmm. um, but the dog said that, you know, and I, I didn't know the woman had lost her son. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I had given specificity that only the son would have known. Right. So, I mean, I was kind of blown away myself. I mean, I learned so much in the work. Right. It's always a different thing that I learned because mm -hmm. I didn't think I'd be talking to dead people. I think right. I thought this would be just people like you did this, you know? Yeah. And now I'm, I'm talking to dead people and sometimes in real time where I'm, I'm talking to the person with the person like boom, 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 like bantering mm -hmm. back and forth. And I kind of love it. Yeah, I really love it. Um, guys, if you're just joining us also on YouTube Live, if you're having an issue finding the link to come through for a reading, again, we're just going to pick a few people for readings, but you're welcome to also just shoot me an email at thomas at mediumthomas.com. I think what it is is YouTube filters out URLs must be some sort of spam thing. Um, so if you just shoot me an email at thomas at mediumthomas.com, I can send you the link and you can just click through to Zoom. So thomas at mediumthomas.com. You can also just stay with us on YouTube Live and put your question in chat and Susan can answer it there. We'll pick some people from YouTube Live as well. Okay. So um, last question, Susan. Um, do you see things for yourself? Do you, you know, are you, do you receive guidance for yourself? That's a question that I get asked a lot. So are you able to feel and pick up things for yourself? I am, but I have to not be in my head. <laughs> if I'm in my head, it doesn't work. It's mm -hmm. almost like it's so much lighter and more beautiful working for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't, I, nothing about me is coming through. Right. right. Um, it's so it's such a release, you know. It's like, oh my god, like it's like a workout. But mm. you, you understand, you know, you get it. I know that you know you're you're amazing, Thomas, and so loving and giving. Um, yeah, I, 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 and it comes like in the weirdest thing. I'm just looking out the window and minding my own business, and um, I saw my sister holding my dog in spirit, and I was like in shock, and my. My dog was in shock because I think she tried to show my dog like I'm here and it was, whoa, it was such a hit. And, and then I could, I also feel different when I'm getting the hits for myself. Like I feel the same way I feel when I'm working with a client. Yeah. Like that heightens kind of energy. It's, it's wonderful. Right. That's beautiful. Um, a couple of people are asking Susan in the chat about your deal for an extra 10 minutes and are those sold out? I, I have no idea because I haven't checked at all. I just sent it out right before uh, our announcement for YouTube, but just sign up. I'm gonna do the best I can to get everybody in. Just sign okay. up, pick a time. What, what is that so people know oh, what it is? I did, um, I did 
if you sign up for a short reading, I'll give you an extra 10 minutes. Okay. And so I give so much information. It's that New York talky talk. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Awesome. So I think we're ready to transition into readings if you are. Sure. Okay. So um, we've got a bunch of people here. Um, I don't know if you, Jessica, she has a dog that passed. Carol, who's struggling with employment. Uh, Trina, who's interested in a reading. Uh, Jen, love to hear from her partner. Do you, do you, any of you? I, I just saw, um, hold on. Karen is having a problem at work. I, I, the one that needs employment help. I felt like a employment. Call. Okay, so let me go Which up to that. that. What'd you say? Which one was that? That was Carol. Looks like Carol. So let's bring up Carol. If we can. Okay. So, all right, Carol, we're going to bring you in as a panelist. Um, and if you could try to unmute yourself, try to start your video, see if we can get her on here. Hi, Carol. Well, hold on, we gotta get her to unmute. Unmute yourself, Carol. There you I'm go. unmuted, I think. There you go, Carol. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna hand you over to Susan. Go ahead, Susan. Um, Carol, why don't you tell her what your question is? Um, I am struggling with employment. It's mm -hmm. been a hell of a year. Yeah. And um, I just filled out a very lengthy questionnaire for a job that's in my home state. I've been trying to get back to for quite some time. And I wonder if you see anything yeah, with that. Yeah. So I feel like, do you have a father in spirit? Is your dad in spirit or is it your grandfather? Because I feel like somebody's around you right now that's helping you. And I feel like they're trying to get you moved back home. I would guess it would be my dad. Yeah, I feel like it's your dad. Okay. And he's telling me he's trying to get you back home. So I feel like um, I feel like that's going to happen in the next, like you'll be moving. So he's telling me, get ready, um, that it's, it's happening. And I feel like, are you going to, um, you're going to live close to where you were raised? Is that where you want to live close to where you lived your home state? Uh, the whole, I would be in Virginia. Yes. Yeah, it's a, feel, probably three and a half hours from where I was raised, but yeah, it's, it's going to be a better move for you than where you are energetically. I feel like you're going to go back there and you're going to, drive past places that are going to be happier for you it's going to raise your vibration so i do feel and I, I feel like you you probably want the job to be able to know that something is there for you before you make this big move but i feel really good about it and i feel like you're going to be so much happier there and your spirit is going to be elevated there too okay great yeah does that help carol yes because i'm really ready to leave Florida. <laughs> it's not for you. I feel like it's not for you there. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they, just, they, they just opened the restaurants up there a hundred percent. So you can, you can go out to dinner anytime you want, right? <laughs> uh, I am not going to eat anywhere in Broward in a restaurant and sit close to anybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me ask you, Carol, do you connect to the letter B in spirit? Uh, B. Somebody, somebody with the letter B? I heard a hobby. Uh, yes, I do. A female? Yes. Okay, is that your mom? No, it would be my uh, paternal grandmother. Okay, it feels like an older female energy. Yeah, I just think that she's watching over you too. But yeah, um, I think Susan really, you know, she she kind of um, seems like she got you, you know, that 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 really does make sense. So I, I think you're you're in a good place with, with that. I kind of feel like she totally picked up on you with what I would love like. Andrea B who lost her mother okay great I'm pull her up for you uh Susan Thanks, Tom. hi Andrea oh we have to wait <laughs> Andrea hello hi, hi Andrea. how uh, are you Susan her Good, video you? yeah her video is not working so you're gonna hold on let me see if I can <laughs> Yeah, your video, there's something with your video that's not working. So we'll just do you by voice. That's fine. That's okay, okay. What's your question, Andrea? I feel, I, um, feel I just, mother. yeah, I want to connect to my mother. Yeah, I, the birthday. I feel like, um, 
I feel like she's trying to tell me that um, she's she doesn't have pain and that's a good thing. And she's telling me to tell you to eat her cake, eat the favorite cake that she would have eaten. And I feel like, did she like chocolate cake? She's telling Love. us to celebrate her first Love. birthday in heaven. She loved it. She loved it. Yeah, I feel like chocolate is her favorite cake. And she's telling me, please celebrate my birthday in heaven. It's magnificent. And she says that she's around you. She's also holding a cat. Would she have had a cat or would this be your cat? Would she have had a cat or was she a cat person? Uh, she did have a cat, yes. And I feel like they're together. And she's saying we're happy as clams together. Um, and she's telling, did she have light eyes? Did she have lighter eyes? Yes. Yeah, she's really sweet. And when I feel into her energy, she's telling me she's giving you a birthday cake. She's like, you put up with me. You helped me. She says, this is more for you, but she's saying, you don't, do you not like chocolate? She's giving you a different flavor. She's saying, uh, no, no, I'm chocolate. Um, okay, so. so you have to have some chocolate cake today. I mean, hands down, you have to celebrate her birthday in heaven. And she's telling me no need for you to ever feel alone. She's around you, she's with you. She's helping you, most importantly, she's helping you and she loves you and she misses you a great deal. And she's telling me, um, did you just get a new car? Or are, are you thinking about that you need a car? I just got one. She's saying she loves it. Go she's, ahead. She loves your car. She's like, I'm with you all the time, kiddo. That's beautiful. It is. Thank you. I needed that. You're welcome. Thank so you. celebrate. Thank Happy you birthday. Thank you so heaven. much. We're going to, okay. So we're going to leave her. Hold on one second. <laughs> All right, we're going to put her back. Uh, you got anybody else here? Yeah, what got... about Kareen? Kareen and her cat issues. <laughs> right, Kareen and her cat issues. How do you? Yep, Kareen and her cat. Kareen so we're going to bring her in. It's good that I see it. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, We, we, we got some sort of, oh, well, we got to bring Kareen back in. We got to bring her as a panelist. Hold on one second. Hello? Hi, Kareen. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. So you have a kitty cat, and he's not wanting, I think, okay, so let me feel into him. Um, he loves you. Uh, he's telling me that you picked him and he's happy you picked him. So was he with more than one or you just, I, my cat, your cat, she's a girl. She, yeah. She's a girl. She's with me. She's no, alive. I know. I know she's alive. Okay. You might not be able to hear me. Um, with animals. Never get sexes right. So don't be insulted, him, her, whatever I say. But she's, I feel oh. like, yeah, that's okay. She's, I feel like she would like a fresher food. I feel like she would like, maybe if you mix the kibble in with the wet food, that might help a little. So, you know, um, if she's still getting the wetness. Yeah, she, yep, I do that. Okay, and, 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 and she's also, I just feel like a little tuna smell, like take a can of tuna and leave it in your fridge for a few days. I think she'd really love the fish. She's like saying, yes, she would love like a smelly, uh, fishy kind of smell. Um, she's, she's also talking about the bed. She's very comfortable. She says, I'm very comfortable with her. And she says, tell her I said, thank you. And she likes that you change her water. She likes that you- Yeah, she likes that. Water. She's a princess. <laughs> yeah, and you're a very good mom because you're very, um, she's showing me like you clean her water, like you're very uh, astute on getting all her stuff together and scooping her litter. And she says that she found the perfect mom and, and she's just, she's crazy about you. I mean, pretty much crazy about you. Um, and I, I feel like I feel like a little bit. I know you only asked about your cat, but do you have a a, a female in spirit? Um, and would this be like a grandma? I feel like. Um. Yes. Okay. 
So she's, she, I feel like she's around you and I feel like she was a sweetheart and would have loved animals too. Um, and, and she's, she's um, doing your hair. So I don't know when you were little, if she would have combed your hair or brushed your hair, but she's showing me, she's doing your hair for you. And um, she says, um, tell her I'm very proud of her. She's been with you through all your changes, as she said, and she's very, very proud of you. And um, she's showing me pizza, like she's eating pizza and likes pizza. So I don't know if she loved pizza in life, but she's definitely eating pizza now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> that, does that help you? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetheart. All right, we're gonna go on to our next person. Am I off here? Um, I was driving. And um, thank you. Um, Susan, if people are wanting to book a reading with you, what is the best way to do that? SusanAllenMedium.com. And I want to also encourage people to, um, if you, um, um, as we're going here and stuff, if you, um, if you are not ready to set up a reading or you don't feel comfortable setting up a reading or whatever, you know, you, you're not at the place, you know, maybe even you can't afford it or whatever. Um, I would just recommend go to Susan Allen's website, which is, what is your website, Susan? SusanAllenMedium.com. Go to SusanAllenMedium.com. Sign up for Susan's newsletter. She sends out a lot of information um, a lot of details, uh, a lot of different events that she'll do and she's being a part of. I know she's working on some new projects. So just yeah. sign up for a newsletter. You know, you may find in a month or two months you want to maybe, you know, check her out again. And, um, you know, that's a great just kind of earmark to yourself that you'll come back to that little bookmark. So um, thank you. And I've also been doing these cool pop up readings where I'll send a MailChimp out. And it's been fun and so oh, good. So people can get a reading that way a little. Well, how does how does that work? I how does that work? That's a good question. Oh, I sent out a Zoom link. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sent out a Zoom link and we go on Zoom. So you say I'm gonna be on Zoom at this time and yes. And it's only for people that sign up for my newsletter, so they get these cool pop-ups. Great. So that's another way. I so just, you I just did it for fun and it was so successful and then people booked readings after because they felt comfortable or they had a good yeah. reading on the Great. pop-up. Wonderful. Do you want to do, let's do one more, Susan. I, I saw one that I felt drawn yeah. to. Oh, I love, um, it's a, Thomas, I, I love these kind of questions. Do you connect with our guides or can tell life purpose, want to live a meaningful life? Okay, Karen, I, I mean, I don't know if this is quite a reading, I'm pull but I'd up. like to answer the question. Okay. Do you want to pull her up? Um, hmm. Sure. Maybe is I can. It, is it Karen, K-A-R-I-N? K-A-R-E-N, Conroy. Okay, great. We'll pull her up. I have no idea what seven, seventh level spirit is. I've never heard of that. Have you heard of seventh level spirit, hmm. Thomas? No. Okay, that was a question. Some of these... I don't, I don't know. I just go with the authentic. I go with dead people. <laughs> and that's right. Yeah. Karen? You this don't is Hi, Karen. Hi. I don't know if you can see me. I can't I figure could. out the camera up. <laughs> I like your, your dog. Your dog. <laughs> is, that, is, he, is he living or deceased? Deceased. Okay. My that was my very first rescue dog. Beautiful. Well, you're doing beautiful work. So when you're, you're doing this rescue work, you are connecting to oh, a good. higher dimension when you're helping dogs and helping keep them alive and taking them and giving them love. Love is the highest dimension. And I, I also feel that, um, you know, it's funny, you already are connected. And, um, you know, when people say, I don't know what my life purpose is, it's just an interesting concept to me because everything that you go through in your life is going towards your life purpose. Because if you think that I would have woken up one day and say, hey, I can't wait to talk to dead people. And, and I didn't know that this would be like a profession, you know? So everything that you go through will bring you to what you're supposed to be. Because what you're supposed to be is actually perfect for you. And you're in the right place right now. And I feel like, um, 
I feel like this dog is jumping up on your shoulders right now. Um, <laughs> this is what he's showing me. I don't know if it's a girl or a boy. I never get sexes right in spirit, but I girl. feel like a girl. Okay. She's, she's jumping up and she's like, you're a great mom. You're a great mom. And she's tapping you on the shoulder. And she's telling me that um, the next three to six months are going to really be very, um, like, it's going to really show you what you really want to focus on. So look for, you know, the signs and the symbols and be open to it because they're already giving you signs and symbols. I feel like that maybe you're not really seeing, but you will start to see them now. You're going to start to see them. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I'm going through cancer. So I feel like it's made a whole shift in my life, looking at life. Mm -hmm. She's saying that you're going to, you're going to be okay, mama. You're going to be okay. She just said, you're going to be okay. Oh, good. She's around you. So just hang in there. It's going to, okay. you're just make sure you get your nutrition and do the best that you can with what's going on right now. And um, the next three to six months, you'll see a shift in what you really want to do. You'll know. Awesome. I'll keep my eyes open. All right. Karen, <laughs> love you. Love you. Thank you. God bless. All right, guys. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us today. Again, mm -hmm. if you want to connect more with Susan Allen, go and check her out at her website, which is what, Susan? SusanAllenMedium.com. And you can sign up for her newsletter. And we look forward to seeing you the next time we're on YouTube Live. Many blessings. Bye, Thomas. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Bye.